Hi, my name is Frank. It's Friday. Time to kick back, relax, talk music. Today I want to talk about Gene Simmons. I want to talk about the worst speakers I ever bought and tons more. All right, all right. So just got back from vacation out west. That's the worst thing, man. Do you ever go on a trip and you come back and you get sick? I've been sick for like a week. You can probably hear it in my sinuses. And it's not COVID. I took the COVID test. Everyone in my household got sick here. We all took the COVID test. We were COVID negative. And I don't know why this happens. It might have been because the weather going from hot to air conditioning or just being in the car together it was a 12 hour it was more like a 14 hour drive home so regardless i am back and this is the first video i've shot in probably at least a month my last three videos were all pre-recorded so there's kind of stuff going on as i was away and just kind of laying low so it feels good it feels good to be making a video again and hold on i just had some just have some cheat notes on my computer here, and my computer just shut off. Love vinyl? Tell the world with a Channel 33 RPM t-shirt. Check out the Channel 33 RPM store today. Okay, we're back. As I said, full, full episode. Anyway, we're driving out west. I stopped by and said hello to my friend Gil and his family. Throw up a picture here. Gil is a YouTuber. That's how I met him, by doing these YouTube videos. So it's awesome to see you guys. Okay, first thing is first. I was at, uh, we went out Edmonton, Alberta, Calgary, the Rocky Mountains, all that stuff. We used to live out there. We lived out in Alberta for 12 years and we hadn't been back in five. So it was good to go back and, and visit our favorite places and visit, uh, visit some friends and whatnot. Anyway, I was walking in West Edmonton Mall. It's this huge, huge mega mall. And I walked by this store called Harry Rosen. And Harry Rosen is kind of like a higher end men's store. And look what I saw. I walked by and I'm like, is that the demon? This is Gene. This is Gene Simmons from Kiss. And his face was on this t-shirt. And I walked a little bit closer. And check out the price tag on this thing. This Gene Simmons t-shirt. I think Gene Simmons Incorporated has reached a new low or a new high here. The price tag on this is $180. That's equal to about, that's Canadian dollars. So that's equal to about 140 US dollars and euros. It's equal to about 115 pounds. And it's equal to about 200 Australian dollars. I'm like, what the hell? What kind of t-shirt is this? So I just went to the website. This is made in Italy by a company called Bastille. And it's called the Skull K Icon Print Cotton T-shirt. K Icon. I guess they can't use the word kiss for copyright reasons, I don't know. So it says here, Bastille's visually impactful icon t-shirt is a standout choice for everyday wear. All right. Crafted in Italy, it's pure cotton silhouette is cut slim for a flattering fit, which many of us <laughs> middle-aged guys need nowadays. The eye-catching tee features the skull K graphic printed on a soft silk-like fabric to create a visually striking saturated effect. Wear it with denim and leather boots or sneakers for an elevated take on off-duty styles. It's made in Italy, 100% cotton. I can't say that I will be buying one of these myself. I mean, I can't imagine wearing a $180 t-shirt, especially not this t-shirt, but you know, at 180 Canadian dollars, I said that's equal to about 140 US dollars, I don't know. And nowadays, it may be a better deal than those one steps from MoFi. <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. As a matter of fact, when I left, there were so many of these MoFi stories. My God, I'm sick to death of that stuff. We gotta get things fun and positive again. So I'm gonna try to keep this video fun and light because we don't need any more of this moaning and groaning and negativity. I mean, not that it wasn't warranted, not that it wasn't necessarily warranted, but I am through with that MoFi controversy. All right, one other thing I wanna talk about, well, I got many things, but the next thing I wanna talk about, and I'll talk more about this in a future video as well, but I wanna to touch upon this briefly, is I bought 
these Moki powered bookshelf speakers. I bought them off of Amazon and they were 130 Canadian bucks, like 100 bucks US or so. And I bought them largely on the basis of a glowing review from an audio file YouTuber. I'm not gonna mention this person because that's not important, it doesn't matter. But I was very excited to get these speakers and I gotta say, these are the worst speakers, probably the worst speakers I've ever owned. I returned them right away and I have um, ordered, and they're coming, I've ordered them, I've, uh, I'm replacing them with edifiers because I've had experience with edifiered powered edifier powered speakers and I know they're decent. I bought my mom a pair a while ago and she loves them. Basically, I bought these for my computer, right? Um, I have a, a Mac uh, a Mac Mini. I need speakers for them, so I was going to use these Moki ones for my computer, man. They're horrible to the point that I actually wrote, and I never do this, but I wrote an Amazon review just because I, I just, I had to say this. I never do this, but check this out. And this is my issue with them. There is a constant loud hissing, but worse than that, at low volumes, a noise gate kicks in, muting the volume. It's very annoying during quiet passages of music or when someone's talking, constant hiss, mute, hiss, mute, hiss, mute. I just couldn't deal with them at all. It's like they're hissing and the noise gate kicks in, all of a sudden there's silence. And when I was trying to edit videos, if there's a quiet passage or I'm talking quietly, the noise gate would kick in and just kill the voice. And I wish I'd actually got video of the issue I had with the Mokis, but I was so disappointed and Sherry was heading off to the post office. So I quickly bundled them up, put them back in the box and I returned them. But just stay away from Moki powered speakers. That's the bottom line here. I did pick up a CD when I was out in Edmonton. This is the Whitesnake greatest hits and this is the two cd set the the second disc is a blu-ray featuring all the white snake videos i've been on a white snake kick for some reason this year i bought several of the the box sets the cd box sets that dave recovery else put out but i bought this one because this is man i'm coughing again excuse me i bought this one because this has got uh, remixes of a bunch of songs and I was streaming this a lot and I really you know I, I generally shy away from remixes particularly when you're remixing a classic album but I really like the remixes they've done on the slip of the tongue songs there's a few on here you know slip of the tongue was never my favorite white snake album but one of the things that I really disliked about it, and I hate to say this, was Steve Vai. I thought Steve Vai was a horrible fit for Whitesnake. It just, just did not work. And on these remixes, they actually, t they toned down the Vai, if that makes any sense. I mean, Steve Vai is originally all over those tracks, and they really buried a lot of Steve Vai's licks and whatnot in the mix and made it more hard rock, more hard rock and stuff without a lot of that Steve Vai wanking. So I really dig that. Um, the versions on here, Fool Fear Loving, Judgment Day, The Deeper the Love, and Now You're Gone. So I bought the CD largely to get those songs and I like them a lot better without Steve Vai. I don't know, have you heard these? What were your thoughts on Steve Vai being in Whitesnake? At the time, I was like 16 years old when all that came down. And even back then, man, I was like, that is a horrible fit. But that's just me. I got some more videos coming up from our trip. Actually, my next two Sunday videos are from our trip out west. One of them is record shopping with my pal Javier. And he was in my very earliest videos. Some of you may remember him. If not, all good. You're going to really dig that video. I have another video coming up. I checked out some of the thrift stores in Edmonton and actually came across a couple of hidden gems. I really dug that video. So stay tuned for both of those coming up in the coming weeks very soon. All right, it's time to open the mail. So I gotta say, I've been AWOL from the channel, as you know, for like a month now. And I do have several packages sitting in my inbox with music that I have to listen to and I haven't listened to yet. So if you sent me stuff, I do have it here more than likely, but I haven't had time to sit down and properly digest the music. So to all those people, and there's a handful of you, you know who you are, thank you very much for sending the music. 
And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to sit down and listen very closely to what you have sent. And I'll come back, I'll show everyone what you sent, and I'll talk about it. But today, I do have one thing I want to show you. These are some tapes I got from John in Toronto, Canada. And here's the note that John sent. Hi, Frank. Sent you some tapes. Yes, I know they're in an Amazon package, but in my defense, I like to recycle as much as possible. Absolutely cool. You most likely have all of these tapes, but as you know, tapes wear out too. Yes, they do, John. I read an article in the late 70s on how you can tell if you have a good quality tape by looking at the color of the tape. And this is interesting. He says the darker the tape the better it is. And I never really thought about this, but I, 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 I think I've observed this as well. Like chrome tapes and metal tapes are darker than normal position tapes, I think. I'm gonna have to look into that, but that's interesting observation. Uh, okay, yeah, and then John says that here too. He says, I have some metal tapes and they are black in color. And people who know about tapes know that metal tapes are the best that you can get in quality. Absolutely. So it seems that the article I read has some merit to it from John in Toronto. John, thank you very much. Not necessary at all, but absolutely. I do love tapes and I'll show everyone what these are. And I've been listening to a lot of tapes over the past couple months. I listened to most of my tapes in the garage and it's summertime, right? So I got a fridge out there and crack open a beer and listen to music and sometimes people pop by. So this is great. This is some fresh music for out there. First of all, I got Gowan. Strange Animal. This is a Canadian classic. Nowadays, Gowan is the singer, Lawrence Gowan is the singer of Styx, but he was a solo artist before that. And uh, what was the big track on here? Um, Strange Animal, Your Strange Animal and Criminal Mind. Two great tracks. Next, he sent me The Police, Ghost in the Machine. I absolutely love The Police. And this is one of my favorite Police albums, probably this and Synchronicity. But I have such good memories of this album. I remember being a kid and going to our neighbor's house and my friend's dad had this on vinyl and it's, it was so good, man. Spirits in the Material World, one of my favorite police tracks, as is Everything She Does Is Magic, Invisible Sun. This is just, it's such a great record, such a great album. So thank you very much. Another Canadian classic, Jeff Healy, Rest in Peace, such an amazing, an amazing guitarist. This was his solo debut, and the, the big tracks on here were Confidence Man and Angel Eyes. My favorite track was probably River of No Return, but if you like the blues, if you like blues rock, if you're just a fan of rock guitar playing and you're not familiar with Jeff Healy, you got to check him out. He was an interesting guy. I mean, one, he was blind, and it's not it's not unprecedented for a blues musician to be blind, but not only that, Jeff played with his guitar flat on his lap with his um, with his neck hand playing on top like this. So he kind of played his Fender. Actually, it was a Squire. It looks like a Fender, but it's a Squire Stratocaster. He played it like this, and that gave him so much more flexibility. It has this really powerful vibrato and string bending. So good. Uh, what else was in here? Sting. Nothing Like the Sun. This one I was less familiar with. I didn't follow a lot of Sting's stuff when he went solo. Um, you know, he became adult contemporary in many ways, but there are some good tracks on here. Englishman in New York, I love that. And Be Still, My Beating Heart, a great track. Uh, what's this one? I haven't listened to this one yet. The Black Keys and Seether made you a tape because you're willing to hear new artists play in CRO2, Chrome Position 2. The Black Keys and Seether. Yeah, I know those artists. So, awesome, John. I will check that one out. Got Fleetwood Mac, Mirage. I did not own this one. We got more police. I always mess up the pronunciation pronunciation of this one, particularly with a sinus cold. Outlandis, Damore. Another great album. Next to You, So Lonely, Roxanne. And this is more raw police. And uh, the Rolling Stones, Hot Rocks, 64 to 71, a great compilation. Um, I love, I love the early Stones. It's like, what's better, the 60s Rolling Stones 
or the 70s Rolling Stones. I tend to gravitate more towards the 70s Stones, but the 60s stuff is great as well. So awesome, John. I appreciate these. I've listened to some of them. I need to listen to the rest of them, and I'll be doing that again over the next week or two. So completely unnecessary, but these tapes have found a good home here. So thank you, John, very much. You rock. All right, 33 years. That's my Friday video back. I'm, I'm sorry I'm so stuffed up. I'll be better by my next video. I promise you that. I hope you dug this episode. It's great to be back. Great to have you all come back again. Until next time, keep on spinning.